so good evening one and all uh, welcome to our uh, 31st uh, webinar which is conducted every thursday uh, right from june 4th uh, and uh, today it's a coincidence that it is our 31st uh, webinar and that too on the date 31st uh, december 2020 and uh, it's on new year eve so all of all all uh, all participants who have been regular for this webinar uh, i on behalf of M mss i welcome uh, all of you to this webinar and uh, we have today special uh, guest uh, from andhra pradesh who is working uh, in uh, babatla college of engineering uh, andhra pradesh uh, and today you will be dealing with the topic a road map uh, to uh, 5g and its challenges and you know all of you know that Uh, in coming few months, uh, we'll be switching on to 5G. So, what are its benefits and its challenges? Will be discussed in this particular platform. So, before going into the session, I'll give a short introduction of our uh, speaker to the audience. Uh, Dr. Pawan Kumar received the B.Tech degree in ECE from JNTU Kapinada in 2010, M.Tech degree in Communication and Signal Processing. Uh, from Acharya Nagarjuna University in 2013, Guntur, and PhD from Pondicherry Central University, Puducherry in 2018. He has authored and co-authored multiple peer-reviewed scientific papers and presented works at many national and international conferences. He has published a chapter in book titled uh, "Multifunctional Operation and Application of GPS." He also holds a patent for the work logging, control, and prevention in routing in wireless sensor network. He is actively associated with different societies and academies, and currently working as an assistant professor in Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering at Bapatla Engineering College, Bapatla, Andhra Pradesh. So, on behalf of IEEE Malabar Subsection, I welcome you, Dr. Pawan Kumar, to this platform. And uh, uh, over to you, Pawan. You can carry on. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sabik, sir, for your nice introduction. So, are you able to hear me? Yeah, yeah. You can proceed. You can share your slides. Yes, sir. Is it visible, sir? Yeah. Okay. Good. You can put it in slide mode. Yeah. Actually, I have kept in slide mode only. Oh. Okay. 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 Fine. Okay. Good. Uh, I, no, it's not in slide show. You just press F five. Sir, I have kept in a slide show only, sir. Okay, 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 then. Okay, then. Carry on. Okay. Okay. This is Dr. Pawan Kumar working as an assistant professor in the Department of ECE, Babatra Engineering Colleges. Today we are here to discuss about the technical challenges involved in the 5G and how we have came to the 5G. Start from first generation mobile networks to the fifth generation, fifth generation mobile, mobile networks. networks. the road map we will see later we will move to the the technical challenges involved in the 5g networks so the presentation will follows like this so we will start with the introduction then we will see the what are the challenges we are facing in the mobile networks today and we will discuss about the previous networks nothing but 2g 3g 4g and 5g networks and we will see what are the technical support we are having with the 4g and 5g and we will see the challenges involved in the 5g also so if you see the journey start from maxwell's equations to the today's fifth generation mobile networks it was an amazing journey so initially in the 18, in the year of 1873 when maxwell introduced the maxwell equations no one thought that this type of mobile technology will come and rule the world so later marconi invent came with the first radio network later today after 2010 after 2010 there is a tremendous change in the mobile technology what we are using today so everyone we are we are hearing the buzzword 5g 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 what is meant by 5g that 5g we will see today what are the technical challenges involved in the 5g also we will see before entering into the 5g we will see the before networks nothing but 2g 3g 4g as well as 5g if you see the statistics released by e marketer the mobile phone usage in india which is changing from 2013 to 2019 there is a dramatic change in the mobile usage so the smartphone users are increasing from year to year 
this growth is showing the requirement of new technologies in the wireless industry as well as mobile industry. Similarly, this you can see here, this is a worldwide mobile traffic, what we are using. So you can see here, this is a smartphone usage, and this is a tablet usage, and this is the future phones. So in the next forthcoming years, there is no future phones. Uh, everywhere we are going to use smartphones as well as tablets and smart devices only are going to use. To satisfy these many requirements, we have to go with the advanced mobile standards. So this is a estimation of mobile traffic by different service types, nothing but non-video, video, and mission to mission communication. So you can see the video traffic is more in the upcoming days, now and upcoming days, the demand for video traffic is increasing. The demand for video traffic is increasing means we are we should be in a position to support that um, this much of video traffic. If you want to support this much of video traffic, your mobile communication technology should support higher data rates. So whatever the 4G we are using today, it is offering in terms of megabits per second. So if you are speaking about 5G, so the targeted data rate is in terms of gigabits per second. So that requirement will uh, make influence to us to go with this fifth generation mobile networks. So you can see the first, second generation mobile networks. Before this, we are having 1G networks. That 1G networks are based on analog technology that is using FDME as a multiple access key. Here, start from 2G, this 2G is nothing but a digital technology. So in case of 2G, we are using TDME as a multiple access key. So time division multiple access, we are using as the multiple access team in case of 2G. In case of first generation, we have used FDME as a multiple access technique. Here we are using TDME as a multiple access technique. So in case of 2G, so in the entire world, we know that there are two simultaneous standards will be there. That is US basic standards and European basic standards. In the starting days, there are a lot many standards came into the market, but ultimately only two technologies stand up that is one is European technology called as GSM. One more is US technology CDMA. So both are parallel standards. So it is working based on GSM. GSM is based on European standard. Your CDMA is based on US standard. If you see the data rates, it is around 10 kbps. If you want to speak exactly, it is 9.4 kbps. So the ultimate purpose of any mobile phone in the initial days is to establish voice calls. That's why these GSM phones and CDMA phones, the ultimate purpose is only voice calls. So in the GSM, a SMS service has been introduced. The SMS is nothing but star, a star messaging service. Before that, we have used pages. So that pages was replaced in the mobile phone itself. By using GSM, we can able to send the short messages. So I think you know about SMS. Later on, if you see 2.5G technology, so GPRS came into the market. So GPRS stands for General Packet Radio Service. This is the first technology which is supporting internet into the mobiles. Before this, there is no internet into the mobiles. This is the first technology which is supporting internet into the mobiles. If you see the data rates, it is around 50 kbps. It is supporting voice as well as a few data services, nothing but a wallpapers, a music, a songs like that a small video or data traffic has been introduced into the GPRS. Later on, if you see, we have to speak about this as 2.75G, nothing but edge technology. Edge technology stands for enhanced data rates for GSM evaluation. So it is the name itself indicating it is the enhanced data rates for GSM. So if the technology is GSM only, we are enhancing the data rates for it. So the speed is around 200 kbps. This also meant for voice as well as data only. When you are using your mobile, in the top right side corner, right side corner, we can able to see the mobile network. Sometimes we will see 4G, sometimes we will see H, sometimes we will see H plus, and sometimes we will see E. E is nothing but this edge technology. Whenever your 4, 4G tower is available, your mobile is connected with the 4G tower. Suppose if you are using 4G mobile, obviously it will be connected with the 4G tower. Suppose if you are traveling in a train or in a bus, Suppose if the 4G tower is not available, so obviously it will switch to the 3G tower. So that means H plus. If the 3G tower is also not available, it will switch to the 2G tower, nothing but edge technology. So that E stands for edge technology. 
next you can see this is a 3g 3g systems so here also this is based on gsm the cdma 2000 is based on cdma technology both are parallel standards only so name itself indicating it is wideband cdma umts universal mobile telecommunication standard the speeds are around 380 k 384 kbps it will support along with your voice and data it is supporting video calling service also that means the data rates have been increased from the 200 kbps to 384 kbps the data rates have been increased later if you see 3.5g technology came so this hs dpa and hs upa is advancements of your umts this one cross cbdo revision version a b as well as c this is the advanced version of your cdma 2000 so if you see hs dpa high speed downlink packet access high speed uplink packet access commonly we used to call it as hspa high speed packet access so in your other day i have told you when you are using your mobile if it is connected with the 3g tower it will show h plus that h is nothing but this one hspa h plus it is showing hspa high speed packet access if you see the data rates it is around 5 to 30 mbps of speed so it is supporting video calling as well as video conferencing also because of the higher data rates so this application i am showing to give a, a brief overview about the data rates so entire 3g technology is based on cdma so the multiple access scheme used in the 3g is cdma so the advantage what you are going to get here is universal frequency reuse we can able to use all the frequencies in all the cells that is the advantage you are going to get in case of 3g because of cdma all the spectrum you are using all the time for all the frequencies but the code is different for different people so when you move on to the 4g so the 4g name is lte long term evolution so the data rates if you see it is in terms of 100 to 200 mbps so the parallel standard has been developed by ieee that is wimax so this lte was introduced by 3gpp the abbreviation for 3gpp is third generation partnership project it is a forum in the world wide which is taking care of the specifications as well as standardizations of your mobile technologies so the data rates is in terms of 100 to 200 mbps it is supporting online gaming as well as hd tvs also today we are enjoying the services of online gaming and hd tvs in your mobiles because of the higher data rates so if you see the evolution from first generation to the fifth generation it is based on analog technology here it is based on digital technology from 2g to 5g what we are using is everything is digital so in case of 2g a special feature has been introduced that is a messaging service and internet service later when you come to the 3g a mobile communication we are using uh, mobiles we are using for mainly for internet applications in the 4g cloud we are using ip and a true mobile broadband we are using in case of 5g we are speaking about unlimited data capacity so we'll see what is the backbone for 5g and all within a short span of time so when you come back the 3gpp releases already have told you this is a, a forum in the world ways which is taking care of the standardizations of mobile communications so there are some releases from the 3gpp release 8 is nothing but lte this is 10 is nothing but lt advanced this came into the market in the year of 2012 so recently release 15 also came into the market that is giving the specifications about the 5g so here i am giving the bro, uh, brief overview about the 4g so this is lt so lt is nothing but release 8 release 10 is dealing with lt advanced if you see the data rates so the data rate is different in uplink as well as downlink so always we know that the uplink data speed is less compared with the downlink data speed so in case of downlink we are going to get 300 mbps in case of lte advanced we are get, going to get 1 gbps the reason is here we are using a concept called as carrier aggregation and coordinated multi point transmission machine to machine communication like that every release to release some extra features are added in case of 3 gpp releases so in case of lte advanced we are having a future called as carrier aggregation we will see what is meant by carrier aggregation within a short span of time so similarly if you compare spectral efficiency also the downlink and uplink it is in case of lt advanced the spectral efficiency is more and similarly the data rates are more 
so that if you see the features of an lte so in case of 2g we are having a standard bandwidth of 200 kilohertz that 200 kilohertz will be divided into time slots each time slot is of 25 kilohertz so that means the channel bandwidth is 200 kilohertz narrow band system when you come to the 3g there is a standard bandwidth that is 5 5 megahertz bandwidth but if you come to 4g there are different scalable bandwidths available so which are 1.4 gigahertz 1.4 megahertz 3 megahertz 5 megahertz 10 15 as well as 20 there are six scalable bandwidths available in case of 4g depends upon our requirement we are going to use these bandwidths so when you are going using only voice traffic we'll go with the less bandwidth when you are using the online gaming and all we have to go with the more bandwidth so based upon the requirement we are going to use the bandwidth here so the maximum bandwidth is 20 megahertz channel bandwidth in case of 3g we are having only 5 megahertz bandwidth here we are getting an advantage up to 20 megahertz when the bandwidth is increasing obviously the data rate will increase so here the bandwidth support uh, supporting up to 20 megahertz so we can able to get up to 300 mbps speed whatever the frequencies we have used it in the 3g same frequencies we are using for 4g also we are not using any new spectrum in 4g we are using the spectrum same as your 3g so if you see modulation schemes in case of uplink and downlink we are using qpsk 16 cram and 64 cram so if you see multiple access technique already we have discussed it in case of 3g we are using cdma the backbone of 4g is it is using OFDM technology. OFDM stands for orthogonal frequency division multiple access. Multiplexing. OFDMA stands for orthogonal frequency division multiple access. In case of downlink, we are using OFDMA. In case of uplink, we are using SCFDMA. The reason is, in case of OFDM, the PAPR problem will come into the picture. So peak P average power ratio will create a lot many problems in case of OFDM. So that's why when you are going for uplink, the PAPR problem is more. That's why to avoid that problem, we are using the variation of OFDM technology, that is SCFDMA technology. So similarly, if you see the data rates also, the data rates will be different based on the antenna configuration. So without disturbing anything, if you increase the antenna configuration, then you can able to increase the data rate. So if you are using two by two MIMO, we are getting 150 Mbps speed. If I am using four by four MIMO, I can able to get 300 Mbps speed. Without disturbing any system, if I increase the number of antennas at the transmitter at the receiver, so you can able to get the more data rate. So that is the advantage we are going to get when you are going with the MIMO technology. So if you see the frequency bands, these are the frequency bands we are using for 4G. Same bands, these bands are same for 3G as well as 4G. So same bands we are using for 4G, what we have used in the 3G. So these are the uplink bands and these are the downlink bands. So these are the band number, band one, band two, band three, like that. So in India, we are using band three for downlink purpose. That is 1.8 giga megahertz, sorry, 1.8 gigahertz or 1800 megahertz. So in this range, there are different channel bandwidths available. What are the channel bandwidths we have discussed previously? All the bandwidths it is supporting. So 24% of the world is using this band, band three. So apart from this band, 7 is more popular, 2.6 gigahertz band. So 26% of the world is using this band. So apart from this band 3, 2 point, band 7 is more popular. So in India, we are using band 3 for downlink purpose. So these are the uplink bands. These are the downlink bands. So when you compare the spectral efficiency, capacity, and cell edge user throughput, so come with the LTE and LTE advanced. So this is a LTE release 8, LTE advanced release 10. So we are getting one GBPS speed. Similarly, remaining capacity and cell edge throughput, everything we are getting the multiplication factor of 1.4 to 1.7 times. Why you are getting these higher data rates in case of LT advanced is we are using the concept called as carrier aggregation. So we can able to combine the carriers. So previously you can we have seen in case of LTE, we are having maximum bandwidth of 20 megahertz. So we can able to use 20 megahertz bandwidth. With this 20 megahertz bandwidth, you can see with four by four MIMO, we are getting 300 Mbps speed. So in case of LT advanced, we are having a future called as carrier aggregation. So we can able to combine the carriers. How many carriers we can able to combine is 
maximum of five carriers you can able to combine. That means five channel bandwidth you can able to access at a time. So five into twenty hundred megahertz bandwidth is possible in case of LTE advanced. With hundred megahertz bandwidth, getting one one Gbps is very simple. So the bandwidth is increasing. Obviously, the speed of the system is increasing. So in case of LTE advanced, with the carrier aggregation, we are going to use five carriers at a time. So each carrier is of twenty megahertz. Five into twenty hundred megahertz bandwidth is possible. With that, we are getting one Gbps speed. So you can see already we have shown here this. So how we are going to do this blocking? Resource block is equal to one integral h, so which is twelve sub carriers. So this is the frequency representation. So in case of OFDM, whether my voice is clear, Sabik sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your voice is okay. Okay, sir. In case of OFDM here, if you see the frequency domain representation, so we are going to use one resource block as one eighty kilohertz. One eighty kilohertz means twelve sub carriers we are using. Each sub carrier spacing is fifteen kilohertz. So fifteen into twelve, which is one eighty kilohertz, which is used as one resource block. So this is a resource grid we are going to call it as. This is a resource grid. So same resource grid. If you show in the time domain, this is the LTE frame structure in case of time domain. So this is the one sub one frame total one frame, which is ten milliseconds, which is divided into sub frames. So there, this you can discuss. This you can able to see when you are studying about OFDM. So seven OFDM symbols we are going to transmit at a time. So still we are getting the problem of indoor coverage. Today we are using four G networks. When you go to the apartment cellars, we are not getting proper signals. when you go to the indoor auditoriums we are not getting the proper signals everywhere we are facing the indoor coverage problems so the reason is when you are going for 4g voice calls also we are routing via packet switching so that's why we are calling it as vo lte vo lte stands for voice over lte so in case of 4g your voice calls also routing via packet switching previously in case of up to 2g We have used circuit switching for voice traffic. So, in case of circuit switching, acknowledgement signal will be there. If any packet is lost, we are going to send the packet again. Retransmission is possible. When you go for the packet switching, if you, there is no acknowledgement, there is no acknowledgement. We don't know whether which packet is lost. So, there is no retransmission in case of packet switching. That's why, in case of 4G, we are facing a lot many problems with voice traffic. If you see the 5G. What is the target given for 5G? Is these are the targets given for 5G? So when you see the transition from 3G to 4G, we have discussed only speed as the main factor. So there we have having up to 300 Mbps speed. In case of the 3G, in case of 4G, we are getting up to 1 Gbps speed. So when you see the 5G, so the target is we have to get 100% coverage. Whether we are in the indoor indoor auditorium or indoor coverage or in the outdoor coverage, you have to get the signal. And the data rate is one to ten Gbps speed. The round trip delay that is from base station to the mobile and mobile to the base station. So within one millisecond, your call has to be connected. So your call has to connect within one millisecond. So later you can see the data density a ten thousand Gbps per kilometer square. Within a kilometer, ten thousand Gbps data we are going to use. Within one one kilometer, one million devices has to support. And if you are traveling with a speed of 500 kmbps, kmbps also, we have to get the signal. So I think you know now our trains are moving with a speed of 90 kmbps. We are speaking about bullet trains. The bullet train speed is around 350 kmbps. So in the 90 kmbps speed itself, we are not getting proper signals in case of 4G. So you can see the target given for 5G. So it is around 500 kmbps. So when you are traveling with a speed of 500 kilometers per hour also. You have to get the signal without any disturbance. The minimum data rate is one Gbps. They are asking. So we are getting all these advantages. But if you see the if you see the energy, so there are uh, the target is fifty percent energy. We have to reduce the total network energy reduction is fifty percent. So we have to get all these services with fifty percent reduction of energy, and ninety nine point nine nine percent the network should be available. For every time, 
every every time if you see the network has to be available so these are the targets given for 5g so this is given this is called as imt 2020 standard imt 2020 the target given for 5g is 2020 so recently now you can you, can, you are seeing some phones are coming with 5g technology but it is not complete version of 5g if partial version so it will take certain amount of time to get complete 5g technology come into the market we will see what is the reason behind that so the vision for 5g is high data rates typically in the order of gbps speed extremely low latency already we have seen the latency is 1 millisecond within 1 millisecond we have to get connected then you can see the capacity of the base station a main fold many fold increase in the base, base station capacity and we have to get the better qos nothing but quality of service compared with your 4g so user has to get better qos compared with your 4g these are the vision nothing but standards given for 5g so if you want to satisfy these many requirements so what are the requirements we have seen if you want to satisfy these many requirements as a communication engineer what are the technologies which is supporting to get this money requirements we have to discuss so these are the technological support which is uh, targeting for 5g so we are discussing about small cells nothing but we are using heterogeneous networks so there we are going to use different base stations so already we are using macro macro base stations along with the macro base stations, base stations we are going to use micro cells pico cells femto cells rrh radio remote heads as well as relays so everything we are going to use small cells this small cells is going to play a vital role in case of 5g new radio access network architecture has to come into the picture so what are the architecture we are using in case of 4g same architecture won't support so we have to discuss about new radio access network architecture and massive mimo so already we have seen in case of 4g up to 4 by 4 mimo when you speak about massive mimo it is supporting up to 512 by 512 antennas and 1024 by 1024 antennas theory wise okay when you are going for practical there are lot many coupling issues will come into the picture when you are going for this much of bulk antennas so the spacing is very less because of that there is a mutual coupling between the antennas so there are lot many problems will come into the picture when you are using massive mimo similarly beam forming so beam forming is possible only with massive mimo so beam forming is we are going to steer the beam we are going to identify the users we will see the later what is meant by massive mimo and beam forming and comp comp is nothing but coordinated multi point transmission there should be some coordination between your mobile to mobiles similarly base station to mobiles Co coordinated multi point transmission is going to play a vital role without coordination it is very difficult in 5g to support this much of data rates and noma noma is nothing but non orthogonal multiple access so already we have seen in case of 3g we are using cdma in case of 4g we are using ofdm so the main advantage of ofdm is multi carrier modulation in case of ofdm we are going to convert the frequency selective channel into the parallel flat fading channels so the advantage is we are using multi carrier modulation so ofdm was available in the 1980s itself but at that time it was not popular and when you come to the 4g and if you see the wifi routers everywhere we are using ofdm the reason is so in the starting days of ofdm we have to use multiple carriers that means multiple crystal oscillator we have to use for generation of multi carrier signals but later on paper came that is proving the output of the multi carrier is equal to iff50 output so the entire multi carrier block is replaced with one iff50 block so that iff50 implementation is very easy compared with your multi carrier multi carriers that's why ofdm is more popular in case of recent days so in case of ofdm maintaining of orthogonality is very very difficult that's why we are getting so lot many problems ica problem nothing but inter carrier interference inter channel interference then we are speaking about papr peak to average power ratio problems like that some problems are there in case of ofdm to overcome that we have to go with the non orthogonal multiple access scheme so this is a one of the trending thing 
in case of physi each one is one research area if you see small cells so there are different types of cells small cells is nothing but pico cells femto cells rrh so this is called as heterogeneous networks in case of heterogeneous networks there are different challenges nothing but interference management how we are going to manage your resources how we are maintaining synchronization like the different technical challenges are there similarly radio access network also in each and everything there are that many phd problems are there if you want to do research in, the, in this area each and everything is a research area only in each and everything there are that many technical challenges then each and every one is a one research area so if you see cognitive radio so i think you everyone is familiar about this cognitive radio concept so which are the spe spectrum is available free in that particular area we are going to sense via cognitive spectrum sensing and we are going to use that spectrum for the our application so the main problem in case of 5g is lack of spectrum so we are speaking about gbps speed but the spectrum is not available so there is no available spectrum in the frequency spectrum so that is the main problem so with the available thing how we are going to satisfy so that we'll see so for hardware support cognitive radio software defined radio is needed without software defined radio cognitive radio implementation is very difficult so both are interrelated with each other so if you see the spectrum requirement in case of frequency spectrum all the frequencies are assigned for something some applications but there is no free band up to microwaves for your mobile communication so whatever the band is available already it is allocated there is no free band available up to microwave frequencies to give for 5g so whatever the band is available is in the order of gigahertz that is from 3 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz we used to call it as millimeter wave band if you calculate the wavelength the wavelength is in the order of millimeters that's why we used to call it as millimeter wave band the band is from you can see here 3 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz that is the total band available that is for millimeter waves so this is the only band available so everyone is proposing millimeter waves we are going to use for 5g so in case of millimeter waves if you are going to use there are lot many problems it comes into the picture the reason is you are going for the high frequencies when you are going for the high frequencies the path loss are more the path losses are more the signal absorption is more so if a dog comes or if a human being comes the signal will be attenuated so our absorption rate is very very more that we can see here beach front spectrum current wireless mobile communication we are using up to this 3 gigahertz band so 57 to 64 band oxygen absorption band so in this band oxygen will be absorbed so this is a water vapor absorption band so we have to study about complete channels what are the channel we have using till today those channels won't be applicable when you are going for the millimeter waves we have to search for the new channel modeling techniques and new channel estimation techniques you can see this is a complete phase picture so this is the application and service wise this is the architecture and management wise you can see this everything should be there then only we can able to think of the phase so the main base station has to be equipped with multiple antennas then only massive mimo is possible so we are going to use array of antennas instead of single antennas we are going to use an array of antennas which is going to support for massive mimo so here we are going to steer the beam so this is a small cells so this is a macro base station so small cells we are going to steer the beam so machine to machine communication device to device communication internet of things iov vehicle communication and small cells already i have told you different cells we are going to use nothing but pico cells femto cells all these small cells has to be there and millimeter wave broadband has to be there separate c plane and u plane so control plane and user plane has to be used separately so we have to use new radio architecture cloud based cloud based architectures we have to use called as cran cloud based radio access network see then so we have to use millimeter waves so and we are I already have told you we have to use noma non orthogonal multiple access sdma is one type of among the noma techniques so we are going to use space division multiple access 
so this is a complete technical support required to support 5g without the without this it is very difficult to speak about the specification given for 5g we'll see one by one each so previously if you see radio access network in case of 2g and 3g this is a traditional base uh, base station base station centric network your msc will be there that msc will be connected by a base station msc will be connected to base stations this base stations will be connected to users so this is a base station centric network so if we come to the advanced small cell network there we are going to use small cells this is a macro cell within the macro cell we are going to use small cells nothing but pico cells femto cells rrh like that so many cells we are going to use called as small cells the radius of coverage is limited that's why these are called as small cells so in case of pico cells and femto cells the coverage will be different for each and every cell that's why these are called as small cells so this is a small cell network macro cell network is there within the macro cell network one small cell network is there this is a small cell network this is a small cell network so this is a small cell network so this is a base station centric network so here you can see user centric network so from the base station centric network we are shifting towards the user centric network so that means there should be a communication between the users and coordination should be there between the users so this mobile will be uh, this base station will be communicating with this mobile so if this mobile want to get service this mobile is in a position to get uh, give the service for this mobile machine to machine communication has to be happen without interference of the central base station so these two are communicating directly and these two are communicating directly without involvement of any base stations so user centric network is coming to the picture in case of 5g similarly you can see this is a traditional network traditional omnidirectional antenna so this is a base station we are having this base station is giving a coverage of 360 degrees coverage so this is a coverage given by this uh, served by this base station so if we come to this directional antenna system so we are moving from omnidirectional antenna system to the directional antenna system so here we are going to use small cells and we are going to use an array of antennas instead of single antennas here we are going to use an array of antennas multiple antennas we are going to use all the antennas are targeted in a particular direction so the beam is narrow beam so we are going to use pencil beams so this is going to steer the users beam steering we are using nothing but beam forming so we are speaking about the technology called as beam forming so we are going to use beam forming to identify the users and to give the service here you can see this is a base station this is a base station this mobile is getting the service from this and this so in case of omnidirectional system if it is the situation then this will this mobile will get the interference from this one but in case of direction and the system we won't get any interference why because this antenna is serving only this one this antenna is serving only this one and this antenna is serving this user and this user so this is not in a position to give any interference to this mobile the reason is we are using directional antenna system here the, the antenna system is omnidirectional antenna system so this is possible only when you are going for the massive minor so when you are using multiple antennas at the transmitter then only it is possible to get the pencil beams so we are going to combine all the beams and we are going to send then the directivity of the beam is increasing so we are in a position to identify the users so the beam is in a position to identify the users so you can see different types of beam forming techniques so this is a conventional beam forming by using an array of antennas at the base station we are going to steer the beam this is the sectors this is the sectors so sector wise we are doing the beam streaming so we are going to select a particular sector by using the conventional beam forming in the horizontal direction so beam forming different types of beam forming is available that is vertical beam forming horizontal beam forming and hybrid beam forming like that it is a separate research area beam forming so in this conventional beam forming we are going to use a multiple antenna at the transmitter this multiple antennas is going to steer the beam and is going to identify sectors it is going to give the service in terms of sectors so this is a as you can see here 
so this and this base station is serving this particular sector alone this particular sector alone so today we are having an advanced beam forming techniques called as 3d beam forming techniques so to identify the users so we are not in a position to give service for everyone your base station is in a position to support identify the user and to give the service to that particular user alone so it is not going to give service for any other people it is going to identify the user suppose if you think that a user is available here so the your base station is in a position to identify the user and it is going to give the service to this particular user alone the advantage is what you are going to get here is it is not going to give interference for any other people so in case of 3g already we have discussed it, universal frequency reuse that is advantage so same thing will be hold good in case of 4g also universal frequency reuse we are going to use all the frequencies in all the cells when you are going for small cells what is the advantage you are going to get when you are going for the small cells i am going to use all the frequencies in the macro cell i am going to use all the frequencies in the femto cell i am going to use all the frequencies in the pico cell like that in every cell i am going to use all the frequencies that means i am using the frequencies more and more the frequency reuse factor is increasing more and more so that means the capacity of the system is increasing so you can see the capacity is increasing from day to day to satisfy this much of capacity we have to use this type of networks then only we can we are in a position to serve the demand otherwise it will be very difficult to serve that much of capacity so we are going to use all the frequencies in a, each and every cell because of that the capacity of the system is increasing so when you are going for the small cells there is a chance of getting interference also you can see here when i am using the all the frequencies in the macro cell same all the frequencies i am using in this small cell also so when the user is located in this position so this user is getting the service from the main base station similarly this user is getting the service from the mini base station also at that time the user is in the dead zone so he is not in get he is getting signals from both but he is not in a position to connect to anyone so the reason is if the femto if it is a femto cell that will that will be purchased by the user it is, if it is acting in the closed access mode so the closed access mode means only registered user registered people can only get the access so this base station is this user is getting the service from this base station but because of the closed access he won't get the service so he will be in the blocked area like that that many problems are there when you are going for the small cells interference issues are there yeah, resource management issues are there and mobility management issues are there so each and everything is one this area so you can see here so we are going to identify this particular sector alone so here we are selecting the entire sector by using the conventional beam forming if you are using 3d beam forming with the help of 3d beam forming we we are in a position to identify the user exactly so we are identifying the single user so if you go for the multiple users you can see here so i am going to use multiple antennas at the base station this multiple antennas is steering the beam so it is in a position to identify the users exactly suppose if a user is located here it is identifying that user by concentrating the beam towards this user similarly by concentrating the beam towards this user it is identifying this user and the user located here so it is in a position to identify the users also so for this we have to use smart antennas if you want to do this type of beam forming we have to use smart antennas so and we have to use different algorithms the signal processing support is required to implement this smart antennas you can see here massive mimo and beam forming together i am showing here this is a conventional macro base station equipped with large number of antennas so this is an antenna array this is an antenna array this is an antenna array so i am going to use multiple antennas nothing but massive mimo massive means many so i am going to use many antennas at the transmitter similarly many antennas at the receiver so so this is a macro base station by using this massive mimo i am in a position to provide beam forming so all the beams i am all the antennas are going to project the beams in a particular direction then i am going to get the pencil beams you can see here this is the beam direction this is a beam direction techniques
other i have told you in the case of phi z we are going to use non orthogonal multiple axis technique noma in case of noma there are different techniques available so some people are saying about fbmc some people are saying about gfdm some people are saying about hcma and idma apart from this vfmc some people are proposing and gfdm some people are proposing like that different non orthogonal multiple axis techniques are proposing for phi z till today there is no standard uh, multiple axis technique defined for phi z so majority of the people are uh, speaking about gfdm and fbmc so instead of ofdm we are going to use these techniques any one of these technique we are going to use in the phi z so if I, fbmc in case of fbmc we are going to use filter banks A bank of filters we are going to use to give the service so here i am going to use generalized frequency division multiplexing so we are going to use gaussian curves here so sparse code multiple axis intensive division multiple axis like that different multiple axis techniques are proposed in case of phi z you can see here phi z is not nothing but uh, phi z is not not, not alone speed so it is not about uh, latency so when you are speaking about phi z so we have to speak about all this where we are going to use phi z so the applications of phi z so we are going to use that in case of smart cities smart vehicles smart health management smart grids smart farming smart logistics smart industries smart homes all these are the buzzwords today so we are hearing about all these words so your home is automated your city is automated we are speaking about smart cities your vehicles are automated uh, driverless cars we are speaking smart health management so the uh, the doctors are giving prescription via video conferencing so smart health management techniques we are using smart grids so what are the power grids we are using those are smart nothing but if any problem is there we can able to identify very easily and we can able to fix the problems very easily by using these smart grids so we are speaking about smart farming by keeping some sensors in the agriculture in the field we are we can able to identify the problems of the field and we can give to suggestions to rectify those problems so we are speaking about smart farming and the logistic systems today amazon and flipkart they are working with the smart logistic systems smart industries so everything is automated in the industries today so we are speaking about smart industries and smart homes so your lights fans everything is automated everything is connected with an internet so if you want to establish all these things internet should be there so all the things are connected via internet that's why iot is the backbone for your 5g so iot nothing but internet of things so today we are speaking about ioe internet of everything so anything anyone any time and any place so anything will be connected via internet now so anyone will be connected at all the times at all the places so that is possible with the help of iot so with iot only we can able to establish this type of systems so this iot is going to play a vital role in case of 5g if you see the applications the applications of 5g is so these are the different different applications we are using in the transportation systems and richer contents so when you are using the homes smart homes all that you have seen in the electronic industry we are using in the safety systems and life science systems we are using in the case of disaster management we are using in the irrigation today we are using ict tools more and more ict tools we are using and healthcare management so everywhere it is connected with internet so this much of internet has to be there means we have to provide high speed connections this high speed connections are possible only with 5g if 5g has to come into the market means what are the technologies we have discussed all these technologies has to work properly the problem here is when you go for the 5g we are speaking about the millimeter waves in case of millimeter waves the frequency is large that means 3 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz 300 gigahertz so in the large frequencies the signal absorption is more so what are the path loss models we have studied till today those path loss models won't work out what are the channel models we have studied those channel models won't work out we have to investigate new indoor models new outdoor models new path loss models new link budgets so entire rf what are the rf we are using all the rf components are working in the microwave range so what are the uh, microwave components we are using those microwave components won't work in the millimeter band so we have to investigate new antennas 
smart antennas, filters, RF filters. Again, new filters we have to design, new antennas we have to design for 5G. Nothing but millimeter wave band. So everything is on research area. If you want to do research in this 5G, so whatever the things we have discussed, each and everything is one research area, you can able to continue in that. So this is related with small cells, how your femto cells are working and all. So uh, it is around 630. I am stopping at this point. If you have any queries, you can ask me. Participants, uh, if you have any query, you can put it in chat box or uh, you can unmute and ask directly. Anyone having any doubts or any queries, please ask me. I think uh, there is no questions, I think. Okay, sir. Uh, anybody having questions? Okay, okay, fine, fine. Uh, it was a really wonderful section, uh, covered a lot, many areas or aspects in communication. Uh, right from first generation and then proceeding towards the later, uh, which we are using now 4G and then the new coming 5G, what all requirements are uh, needed for 5G, uh, or given an overview about uh, 5G and uh, technical aspects uh, for 5G. An interesting thing is that uh, you have told a lot many research areas that uh, that uh, you can take up as a research work and uh, continue your work. And uh, really, all those areas are uh, of I, 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 uh, highly motivated area and uh, you have many problems in that area. So taking any one particular area in that itself will give you some good work, really good papers or patent or etc. So wonderful uh, session. Uh, on behalf of IEEE MSS, uh, I thank uh, Dr. Pawan for taking up his valued, uh, valuable one hour time and spending us with uh, on this webinar series. Uh, on behalf of MSS, I again once again thank you, Dr. Pawan. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Dr. Thank you, sir, big sir, uh, okay. for giving me this opportunity, and thank you, IEEE Malabar section for giving me opportunity to deliver a lecture in your. Uh, prestigious IEEE Malabar section. Thank you, one and all, for okay, your patience, you. reasoning. Thank you, thank you, Bhavan. And I also thank all the participants. There are regular participants who have been there from right from June month onwards, who is continuously spending their valued one hour to learn new new things. And uh, we 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 are in 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 uh, in that particular mode that we are uh, giving you the, the in return what you are expecting from uh, our side. Uh, we are taking up all the new newly areas and giving you all uh, wanted. So in future also we will be continuing that. Uh, so on behalf of IEEE MSS, I thank all the participants for attending this uh, webinar. Thank you. And also I wish a, a happy new year in advance. Happy new year to all. Sabik, sir.